and welcome back to another Java game development video. In this video, I'll be showcasing a brand new video game that my team and I developed for my computer science final project. We spent 15 weeks creating a 30 page project proposal and developing a video game afterwards. Our problem is that there are not enough drag racing games, so we decided that we should create some and post it on my website neha.com for everyone to download and play. For this video game, we wanted to make sure that we connect to a database to store all of the information for the users. This will enable us to play the game from anywhere in the world and have it save our progress. Originally, I did have this available for anyone to download and play, but due to it not being able to encrypt jar files, I decided to remove it. Since Java runs through a virtual machine, there is no way to encrypt the bytecode that it reads. With this being said, it is easy to decrypt the .class files from the jar file, so anyone would be able to decrypt the game and modify the database. This is why I am providing the source code and the database so it can be implemented locally for security purposes. This was not something I realized until the end of the project. Anyone would be able to see the insert statements and run their own. They would also be able to see the database connection and potentially even log into the database and modify anything. There were two others that helped me in this project. I was the lead programmer and project manager, while another computer scientist was a researcher, and the other one was the graphic designer. This is an image of our project scope and the schedule of what needs to get done throughout the eight weeks of development. Each week, we presented to the class about the progress of the project. Some of the features this game has is a create user section, login system, leaderboards, career mode, time trials, and upgradable cars, along with a way to submit bugs. Let's get started with some gameplay. As we start the game, this is the main screen of the game. It consists of the login button, the sign up button, and the options button. Let's first dive into the options. As of now, there's only one button for the submit bug button. I've been working on a special auto updater feature where the user can either manually update the game or it will automatically update to fix any bugs. I did not get that done in time, but it was just something I was adding because I thought it was interesting. If we submit a bug, we have to type in the user email that already exists in the system. Then we can fill out the subject and the description. I had to create these fields manually in Java because the graphics interface does not have a text field option. That was pretty interesting for me and I was able to use this functionality throughout the game. Once submitted, we can head to the database to the bugs table to see what gets inserted. Here we can see all of the information that was submitted. On the developer side, we can set the tiny end status field to either a 0 or a 1 to signify if the bug has been completed or not. We can also add the priority from 0 to 127 where 1 would be the highest priority. If there are a lot of bugs, we can sort by importance. It also shows the current date that the bug was submitted. Moving along, we will head to the sign up screen. Here we can see the custom user fields coming into play again. The user types in their username, password, email, and their racing number. The email has to have a dot and an at sign to know if it is valid or not. The racing number will be displayed on the user's car later in the game as they get more upgrades. The login screen is pretty basic which just contains the username and password fields. The password is hashed in the database in case of a data breach. I'm also working on a forgot password system where the user can request a new password in the system. Next is the garage where the user can buy upgrades for their vehicle. These upgrades are pulled directly from the database. We have the ability to add however many upgrades we want. We decided to do this for seasonal activities like snow tires, for example. The users can scroll up and down depending on how many upgrades there are. All of these values are controlled on the database side, so we always have the ability to control them live. Each user will start with $500 and the stock upgrades. The red squares signify the active and current upgrade the user has. They can select their desired upgrades for their vehicle. 
if they skip a purchase, it will automatically buy it at no cost. Next would be the leaderboard screen. Here we have the top times for either career mode or time trial mode. It also shows the total overall races all of the users have completed. This adds competitiveness to the game. Finally, we can head to the first game mode which is the time trials. The user's car will get upgraded as they get more upgrades and gain top speed. This is why it looks ugly at the moment. If the user is above a certain speed, they will have their racing number displayed on their car. In the time trials mode, it will show your time as you are racing. It also shows your current and top speeds. Finally, the distance left will notify how much longer the user has until they reach the finish line. The user can press the gas to start the game. Then the stoplight will tick from red to green. The objective is to press the gas pedal when the light is green to gain the most speed. When it is yellow and the stoplight is hit, the user will not gain as much speed. If the user presses the gas pedal when the light is on red, then it is a bad shift since it is too early and the player will lose speed. They will also lose speed if they miss pressing on the green light and wait for the light to restart again. As the user drives, there will be decoration to signify how fast the user is going. Then at the end, the user will cross a finish line to complete the game. A finishing screen will also display to show the user time, top speed, and total money earned. The total money earned will be based off of the top speed. We can now head back and check out the main game mode, which is the career mode. When in the career mode, we can select which opponents we want to race. These opponents are pulled directly from the database. On each profile, it shows the enemy statistics such as speed, bracket, and what rank the opponent is. On the other side, it shows the personal statistics for each user in the database. It shows the top speed, best time against the opponent, the win-loss ratio, and how much money the user will earn for beating the opponent. If they lose, they will not gain any money. Similar to the garage, since all of these opponents are pulled directly from the database, we can add special seasonal racers like Santa and his reindeer in the winter season, for example. All of the stats are kept track of. To start the race, we can select any of these opponents to race against. Finally, when in the career mode racing, we will see how the opponent looks. Based on their speed, their car will look much more aerodynamic. It also shows their speed, time, win-loss record, and the distance they are from the finish line. The game functionality is the same in regards to movement and gaining speed for the time trials mode. When we get towards the end, it will tell the user if they won or lost. If they won, it will show the same statistics as the time trials mode, but it will add the enemy time if they finished first, and will also add the win-loss record against the opponent. One item I learned about database management is to keep track of as much information as possible. Since we keep track of every race, we could eventually add achievements to the game. This would be easy to keep track of because we keep all of the statistics for every race that was completed. We could query the information such as win 100 races, beat this opponent 10 times, be a top racer on the leaderboards, or have an account for a whole year. If we had more time, this would be something easily implementable into our game to add more features to it. Overall, this was quite a fun project to work on and I think it turned out pretty well. We spent 7 weeks planning the game and the next 8 weeks creating it. The versatility of this game was perfect so we could continue adding whatever we wanted in addition to what was made. Don't forget the code and the database will be found on my website neha.com. I removed the database connections but once the sequel is restored, you are able to connect to it yourself and test it. I hope you all enjoyed this project. Working with Java is my favorite programming language and I hope to bring you more videos soon. As always, feel free to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more. Drop any comments or suggestions down below and thanks for watching.